I wish you would put your hands together and give a great new life welcome to missionary Nathan Herod. God bless you, sir. We're honored that you're here tonight. Amen. Bless you, bro. Let's clap our hands to Jesus all over this place. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. We lift you up, mighty God. You're the reason that we're here tonight. We love you, Jesus. We thank you in advance for what you are going to do in this service. We give you glory and honor, Lord, for we know that you're going to do the miraculous in this place. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. It is an honor for my family and I to be here with you this evening. Thank you, Pastor Gaddy. Thank you to your family. Amen. And to this church, thank you for allowing us to be here. My wife, my family and I, as he said, are missionaries in the nation of Spain. And we'll be going back uh, in about two weeks. And so it is an honor to be here uh, with all of you tonight. I mean, we were here uh, this last few weeks working on our visas and getting things together to go back. And we'll be heading out. So pray for us that God will continue to give us great revival in the nation of Spain. It's so good to see Brother Sister Shirley here. Amen. And different ones that are here. It's so good to be with all of you tonight. How many are excited for what God is going to do? Man, it's Wednesday night, and God is going to do some great things. Sometimes we think it only happens on Sunday, but it's here. God's here on Wednesday, and he's going to do great things here among us tonight. I'm so glad that my family is with me, my wife and my children. So glad that they are able to travel with me this evening. I want us to go to the word of the Lord together to Exodus chapter 3, verses 11, verse 11 through 14. Exodus chapter 3, verse 11 through 14. And uh, it is an honor to be with Brother and Sister Gaddy. Uh, we've been, we've, we have communicated off and on for a while about coming uh, here to Cabot, and it just hasn't worked out. And so we're so glad that it has worked out for us to be here today. And uh, it was so good to be with the interns this afternoon and uh, to have, be able to teach that class and to see what God is going to do among our young people in this church. Amen. Ex- Exodus cap- Sorry, Exodus chapter 3. Spanish was about to come out there. Exodus chapter 3, verse 11 through verse 14. And the Bible says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly, I will be with thee. Everyone say, I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that, thou, that, that I have sent thee when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? And thou shall, uh, what shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thou shalt, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me Unto you, I, I look and I focus on that question that he that Moses asked the Lord there in the first part of that verse in verse eleven, where he questions, "Who am I? Who am I?" It is it is the universal question I believe that every one of us asks um, at some point in our lives. Who am I? Moses was no different. Who am I? He said, the Lord says, "I I've got a great work for you to do," and he, Moses said, "Well, who am I to go do that?" It's when God tells us to do something, many times that is our first reaction. Well, well who, who am I? I, I? I haven't been in church that long. I haven't been around this that long. Who, who am I? I want us to jump over to Mark chapter 16 quickly in verse 15. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15 and then skip to verse 17, 18 and then 20. And verse 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 17 he says, And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. Everyone say, the Lord working with them. And confirming the word with signs following. Amen. Amen. I want us to pray one more time and ask that the Lord would speak to us. Amen. The Lord, we want to open up our hearts and our spirits so that the word of the Lord can come in and the seed of the word of God can be implanted and begin to grow. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing the word of God. So as we hear the word of God tonight, faith is going to begin to rise and we're going to be able to feel that God wants to do what he has came here, come here to do. Many of you already feel an excitement, and what that excitement that you feel in your stomach right now is the working of miracles that is already in this place, that was in this place even before I got here. 
And when the, the when working of miracles in here is here and the gift of faith is here, anything can happen. And so we're just going to get out of the way and believe that God is going to do great things among us. Amen. So I want us to pray one more time and ask that the Lord would speak to us. Lord Jesus, but we thank you, Lord, for what you are about to do in this place. Lord, I give you glory and honor, Lord Jesus. There is no one like you, Jesus. Lord, I take dominion and authority over every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, everything that would be contrary to your word. I bind it in the name of Jesus I lose faith right now I lose miracles signs and wonders Lord let your word be confirmed tonight with signs following we will thank you Lord we thank you in advance for what you are about to do we thank you Jesus we give you glory I lose faith right now to be activated in all of our spirits in the name of Jesus we pray one more time let's clap our hands to the Lord he's worthy to be praised hallelujah I love you Jesus I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. It, it seems that it is our human nature for us to question how an all-powerful God would desire to have a relationship with me in my fallen state. And it is, however, even more difficult for us to com comprehend how God would desire to use us in spite of our failures, in spite of our faults. And we read of the failures in, in perfect people and how they were used in the Old Testament and, and the New Testament to do great exploits for God. But it is still difficult for us to accept that a God that God desires to use me in His kingdom. It is easy for us uh, to tell others how God will use them. We, the person comes in and, and God fills them with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it is very easy for us to get close to them and say, God has a plan for you. It is easy for us to say, God is going to use you mightily. God is going to use you in a great way. It is easy for us to encourage others that in spite of their problems, that God still desires to use them. But when it comes to me I I know about my shortcomings I know about my problems I know about my errors I know about my lack of faith my lack of passion my lack of dedication my lack of talent my lack of ability and so I I have a hard time believing that God could use me and if Satan can keep us from realizing the extent that God really desires to use me, we, we will live for God in a frustrated state. Desiring to do more, desiring to fulfill the will of God in our lives, but never feeling that we measure up or are capable of going beyond where we are right now. And Satan will fight every one of us to try to detour us from receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the new birth experience, and, and or being baptized in his name. But when he loses that battle, he, he begins a new attack trying to minimize our potential as he fights against us receiving the revelation of what we are or who we are in the kingdom of God. But it is the will of God that we receive a revelation of who we are. A revelation of how God views us. Because if we can get the revelation of how God views us, it will change our lives. Because many times we, we have the image of how we see other people view us. Or how other people see us. Or how I even see myself. But if I can get the revelation of how God views me. It will change everything around me. When we look at the, the word of God and, and we read our text, our text tells of the great leader Moses that we know about who led the children of Israel out of bondage and, and through the wilderness and to the entrance of the promised land. The man who wrote the first five books of the, New, of the Old Testament or, or, or the, the, the first five books of the Bible was, was a reluctant leader when the Lord spoke to him through a burning bush telling him that he was the man that was to lead the children out of Egypt. 
And for six verses, the Lord lays out his plan to Moses. For six verses, the Lord describes his desire to liberate the people. He, he describes how he will lead them to a land flowing with milk and honey. He reveals what he is going to do. And Moses' first response to God is, But who am I that I should go before Pharaoh? And it is the question that we have all asked. At at that moment that God puts something in our heart to do, we we begin to question, but who am I? We we feel to go pray for someone, and we question, well, who am I? We we feel to go teach a Bible study, and the question says, but who am I? I, We feel to call and encourage someone, and and the question says, well, but who am I? We feel to reach out to someone new, and we question again, but who am I? It, It is the question that is linked to our humanity but it is the will of God that we get a revelation of who we are we have received a revelation of who Jesus is but the Lord is wanting us to understand who we are the Bible says that it is Christ in you the hope of glory when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost you did more it was more than just you speaking in other tongues but it is Christ in you the hope of glory if we could truly get that revelation of what happened at Pentecost it would change our lives and some of you have struggled with the idea that that, that God would even save you and to think that God would use you goes beyond your comprehension but God has allowed me to come here tonight to tell you that he desires to reveal to you how powerful that you really are. That is Satan's worst nightmare. That we would get a revelation of the power that is working in us. We, this church has been in 70 days of miracles. And many of you have heard miracles of, of other people. And other people have prayed for them. And, and pastors prayed for others. And some ministry team has prayed for others. And, and we think, but, but who am I? I'm just going to coast through this 70 days of miracles. But because I, I don't think I have enough ability. or I'm not, I, I'm not consecrated enough for God to use me. We read the story of Gideon. We see in the story of Gideon how the Lord view the view uh, the Lord has the uh, how he views Gideon was different than how he saw himself. We see the angel of the Lord appears to Gideon as he's hiding from the enemy and he is shaking in fear and he is wondering what is going on. And the angel of the Lord says, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Gideon looks around, he, he doesn't know what's going on. He said, Well, I think he's talking about someone else. Uh, this mighty man of valor stuff. I, I, I'm here hiding. I'm here trying to get provide for my family and find food for my family. And, and I'm hiding. I'm shaking it. It was, it was Gideon who responded in the same way that when the Lord told him that he would save Israel from the Midianites. He said in Judges 6, 15, Oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I, I am the least in my father's house. I, I, I'm a nobody. But, but the Lord saw him in a different way. When Gideon looked in the mirror, he saw a man full of fear. But the Lord saw a mighty man of valor. We see that the way that the Lord views us is much different than how we view ourselves. We see ourselves just trying to struggle, just trying to make it to church on Sunday. Trying to make it to church on Wednesday. I, I see my own struggles. I, 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 see, I, I see my own problems. I, I see my own temptations. But if we could get the revelation how the Lord sees us. We know the story of David. David, before he became king, could not even comprehend that he could be related to the king, much much less be anointed king of Israel. And he, he asked the question that stems from our humanity in 1 Samuel 18, 15. And David said unto Saul, Who am I and what is my life or my, my father's family in Israel that I should be son-in-law to the king? He, he says, who am I that, that I could even be related to the king? David, who, who had been victorious in defeating the giant, still struggled. There, 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 he still struggled that there was more that God could use him. And he had just conquered Goliath. He had just won a great battle. But he still had that question in his mind. Who am I that I could even be related to the king? We see... A different example, though, with Peter and John. And we see the Bible talks about Peter and John going up to prayer. We know the story. The Bible says that those around them perceived that they weren't the most talented people in the group. 
Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verse 13 now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus they looked at them isn't that that's a pretty bad situation they're just looking at them and just saying these guys are ignorant we can perceive without even talking to these guys that these are ignorant men but the difference was that they had been with Jesus they weren't the most talented group they weren't the most well, the ones with the most ability but they had been with Jesus they had been the thing that made the difference was that they had been with Jesus so yes at times we may not feel like we are the most talented people we may not feel like we have the most ed the, the best education or be from the best background but if we have been with Jesus people will marvel at what is happening in our lives. If we, we, we consistently tell people not to look on us, don't look at me because I, I, I'm just ignorant. I, I, I don't have anything. Promising them disappointment if they expect us to help them. We, we tell them time and time again that we have nothing. Someone comes to us and they say, we, they tell us, man, I, I've been diagnosed with this disease. I have been diagnosed with that. And we say to them, well, don't look at me. Don't, I, 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 I'm just a Christian that's trying to make it through. But if you will come to my church, we believe in prayer. We're in 70, 70 days of miracles. And if you'll come to my church, then, then someone there can pray for you. But, but if we could get a revelation of who we are, because we see that the apostles they, 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 they did not say don't look on us for we have nothing but in Acts chapter 3 verse 4 and verse 6 Peter he says the opposite when he looked at the man laying at the gate he said look on us then he says such as I have give I thee what I have, what has been put in my spirit, I am going to transmit this to you. Could this be the difference in attitude that, that, that causes different results from what we see? Because when someone comes to us, we are quick to say, don't look at me. You know I'm not perfect. I have a hard time just making it to church on time. But, but come, come have one of the ministry team come pray, pray for you. Come have someone, uh, the pastor, come pray for you. But if we could get that revelation, the, the thing that, 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 that is amazing with Peter and John is that they had received a revelation of who they were. And they could say with confidence, they knew what they had received when they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They knew that there was power working in them. And they could say to them, look on me, such as I have, give I thee. Has anyone ever tried that before? I've tried it. But at times we are fearful to step out and to try it. After Peter told the lame man to walk and, and to walk and Jesus healed the lame man, he, he explained that it was the, the power of the resurrected Savior, and, and, but the, the, that it was Jesus who did the miracle, but the power was in Peter, and he promised that power to every believer. People today, they, they, they think it was all right for Peter to say, look on us, but if we were to say the same thing, we think, well, that is sacrilegious. But the fact is, that every believer today has the same power, has the same authority that Peter had in the book of Acts. Every believer today may do the same things that the believers did by acting upon Jesus' words now as they acted upon them back then, being filled with his power. We too, we can say, such as I have, give I thee and see the lame recover. We can say, such as I have, give I thee and see the cancer disappear. We can say, such as I have, give I thee and see the tumor disappear we can say such as I have give I thee and God will respond to his word when we get a revelation of the power of God that is working within us that's why Satan he is not scared that you come to church on Sunday Satan is not scared that you attend church faithfully but he is scared to death that you would get a revelation of the power of God that is working within you that when God filled you with the baptism of the Holy Ghost he put 
power within you. He gave you power to be witnesses unto all. How are we witnesses? Not just in our talking, not just in inviting someone to church, but in demonstration and demonstrating the power of our God. Such as I have, give I thee. We, 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 we're okay if a visiting preacher comes and prays for the sick. We're okay with that. We're okay. We got preachers lined up this month, 70 days. In a we're okay if they come and if they lay hands on the sick and, and they recover. We, we believe that. We're, we're okay with that. But when it comes to me stepping out, I, 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 I know how my failures, I know my faults, I, I know my problems, I, that God could use me. The Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. Are there any believers here tonight? Well, we got a few. We got a few. These signs shall follow them that believe. It does not say that these signs shall follow the pastor. These signs shall follow the missionary, the evangelist. These signs shall follow them that believe. A few years ago, I just began to literally take that scripture at his word. These signs shall follow them that believe. Sometimes we think, well, these signs shall follow them who have the gift of working in miracles. These signs shall follow them that have the gifts of healing. These, sign, these signs shall follow them that believe. That's me. I'm a believer. Turn to your neighbor and ask him, are you a believer? If they said no, tell them we'll take care of that after church. <laughs> these signs shall follow them that believe. We are here tonight because there is a certain level of faith, even if it's your first time here tonight. You are here because there is a certain level of faith. You believe that there is a God and, and, and you are here because you believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. And, and sometimes we, we, we feel that, that God can use someone else. And I had this lady who one time she brought her daughter to the, the, uh, the front of the, uh, uh, in, in the altar area. And she, she said, can you pray for my daughter? Her daughter was about... 18 years old I said yes what's what's the problem she said well she has a tumor about the size of an orange on the back of her arm and and, and I looked and there was this large tumor on the back of her arm and I said well ma'am are, 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 are do you go to this church she said yes I do I, I said are you a believer she said yes I'm a believer I said okay so you are going to lay your hands on her and watch God do the miracle she said really I said yeah I said you're a believer the Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe so she I, 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 I led her and she put her hand on the back of her daughter's arm that her 18 year old daughter that I could see up that was I could see the tumor the size of an orange on the back of her arm and and I and that lady began to pray we said in the name of Jesus we take dominion and authority because we have power and authority God has filled us with the baptism of the Holy Ghost so we have power and authority we take dominion and authority over this tumor we command it to go right now in the name of Jesus and as we begin to pray and as we begin to pray I saw that lady's eyes get big and her the, the, the mother's eyes got big as she began to pray as that tumor shrunk smaller and smaller and smaller until that tumor had completely disappeared under her arm she was just a believer who began to believe what the word of God says if we will begin to believe what his word says anything can happen I was in a service that was in Madagascar uh, this uh, a few, about six months ago and there was a lady they brought around the front the past a pastor's wife and this lady her eye uh, something had happened and her eye was swollen and her eyeball was almost it almost falling out is very grotesque to look at and and some of her the saints of her uh, uh, from her church gathered round about her you could see this eye it was completely white there was there was no color in that eye but I watched with my own eyes as those believers they were not the preachers they were not the people that that, that were that were evangelists they were just the believers that gathered around there her and they begin to pray and I watched them as they begin to pray and thank the Lord in advance and they begin to say in Jesus name we command this eye to be healed we command this blindness that is also affecting this eye to go in the name of Jesus as we watched that eye that was swollen and sticking out there went back into her head and where there was just a white eyeball and no color all of a sudden a pupil and iris began to form and she was completely healed and began to see perfectly normal not because the preacher laid hands on her but because the people of God began to realize the power that was working in them and they began to say well we are believers and we believe Believe that our God can do anything. Let's just pray and believe God to do a miracle. If we would get an understanding of the power that is working in us. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
So as we hear the word of God, we, we, as, we, as we hear the word of God, we hear God speak. We hear him say things like, I'm the Lord that heals you. We hear him say things like, he forgives all our iniquities. He heals all our diseases. We hear him speak things like, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. When we read the word of God, we hear God speak. Sometimes we struggle, we wonder, what is the will of God? If this is will, of, if we want to know what the will of God is, we, we must go to the word of God. And when we understand what the word of God says about sickness and disease, we, when we understand that it was because of man's sin, that, that sickness came into the world, but now the Lord has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now the Lord has literally bought us back from the hand of the enemy. So now we do not have to be subject to sin or sickness, but some Sometimes we do not understand the, all that Jesus did on Calvary. But when we get a revelation of what Jesus did on Calvary, we can begin to pray with faith because faith comes by hearing the word of God. And so when I hear his word and I hear him speak, then I can pray with faith knowing that he can do anything. We believe at times that, that faith is for almost anyone except ourselves. We think that, 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 that if, if we sing the right song or if we play the right key, that we can have faith. We say if we get, if we sing that one special song where everybody jumps and dances, then we can have faith. But faith is not an emotion. Faith is simply believing what God's word says is true. My faith just says, okay, I believe what he has said. And we get a revelation and an understanding of who we are. Uh, there, was, there was a girl, I was preaching at a church in Canada, and there was a girl who was in, in, in that service, and we began to pray for the sick. The Lord did mighty miracles, and I encouraged the church at the end of that service. I said, I want you to go out this week and allow the Lord to lead people to you, to lead, or you to be led to other people to pray for them. And this girl was at the university. She went to the university that next day, and there was a girl who was sitting beside her. And as she began to talk to that girl, the girl kept looking at her and said, I'm, I'm sorry, I've, I've got problems. I can't, I can't hear you. I've got infection and problems in my ears I can't I can't really hear hear you that well this girl had some severe infection some severe problems and could not hear and the, so the, this girl she said well would it be okay if I pray for you and the girl said okay I, I guess that'd be okay and so she just reached over she said in Jesus name I command this sickness to go I command this infirmity to go Whatever infection or pain that is affecting these ears, I command it to go right now in the name of Jesus. She, she said that there was a pop, that the girl heard a pop inside her head. And all of a sudden, fluid began to run down both of the girl's cheeks. She began to fluid, and the girl just sat there in amazement as, as this fluid began to drain from the girl's ears. And the girl said, oh, I, I can hear now. The, the, the pain is gone. What, 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 what's, what's going on? What happened is the girl realized who she was, realized the power that was working within her. And it led her to someone who needed to hear about this message and hear about Jesus. The purpose of signs, wonders, and miracles is not just so that we can have, say we have 70 days of miracles. The purpose of the miraculous is so that we can lead people to Jesus. So that people who do not know about this Jesus can begin to see the awesome power that is working within our church. To see the awesome power that is working in our life. And God wants to reveal to people. Who he is. So can God use me? I, I, I begin, I begin a few years ago, I just begin to begin everywhere I went, I begin just to look for people to pray for. Everywhere I went, I, I, I would just if it was at the mall, if it was at the grocery store, I was just looking for someone to act like they had pain. And I'd be right there. Is is everything okay? Do you need me to pray for you? I was just looking everywhere. I picked up hitchhikers, I, I, all kinds of crazy stuff. I was just looking for people to pray for. I was, I was, uh, and, uh, it was about a year or so ago, a while back, I, I, I went into a barber shop. In, I was in Mississippi. I was in, in a barber shop. And there, there was a, 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 the lady who was cutting my hair uh, began to talk to me about some problems that she had. And she said, I, I'm scheduled for surgery this next week. She said, I've got several tumors on the bottom of both of my feet. And I, I said, really? I said, what, what's the problem? She said, well, I, I've got these tumors. I said, are, are you in a lot of pain? She said, oh, yeah, I'm in a 
I'm on constant pain. But but next week I'm going and I'm having surgery. They're going to operate on my feet and, and and take these tumors out. And I looked down. She had sandals on. She had all kinds of padding and galls on on the bottom of her feet. And I and I looked at her. I said, you know, I am one of those people that believe that the word of God is true. And I believe that if I pray for you, that God will heal you. And she looked at me. She said, well, what, what is it that I need to do? People are hungry. She said, what do I need to do? I said, well, nothing. Just sit down here in this chair here. So I got up out of the, the barber chair, and she sat down in the barber chair. And everybody stopped cutting hair that was in the, and it was in a mall. It was in a mall, and everyone stopped cutting hair, and the, the barbers now sit in the barber chair. And I, and I just simply, I knelt down on one knee. I said, in Jesus' name, I command this, these tumors to disappear. I command this pain to go. I, Lord, do a work that you, that this lady may know who you are. I thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. I, I, I tried not to cause a big scene. I wasn't trying to do anything crazy. I was trying to be very, but, but, but then everyone else is looking. No one's cutting hair. Everyone's looking what's going on. So I get up and I, and I said, well, I, I think it's done. Why don't you get out of the chair and, and let's try this out. So I, I pulled her up out of the chair and I said, let's walk around. Let's, let's test this thing out. And so she began to walk. And as she began to walk, tears began to run down her face. And she, just, she began to shake her head. She said, I, I, don't, I don't understand this. I, 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 don't, I don't understand what, what is going on here. I said, what's, what's the problem? She said, I, I don't feel any pain anymore. I, I, I don't feel any, these tumors anymore. Everyone has now, no one's cutting hair. They're all looking. She, tears are flowing down her face. She sits down again. She takes off her shoes. She, she begins to feel on her feet, begins to look for those tumors. She said, I, I, I don't understand this. I, I don't know what has happened here. The, but these tumors that, that I'm supposed to have operated on, they, they are gone. I, I don't understand what has happened. I, I said, that, that's just my Jesus showing you who he is. If we would realize there are people all around us and God is wanting to use every single one of us. There are people at the grocery store. There are people at the, the mall. There are people on our jobs. There are people all around us that need a demonstration of who Jesus is. And if you would realize who you are and these signs shall follow them that believe. I, I'm just one of them who believes that the word of God is true. Let me pray for you right here on the job. Let me pray for you right here at school. If you will step out and get a revelation of who you are God will use you God will do miracles you won't even have to invite them to church they'll be asking you what church is it that you go to I want to find out more about what is going on down at your church I, I need that power that you have I want us all to stand here together the word of God tells us who we are the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So when I received the Holy Ghost, I received everything that I needed. Some of you still don't believe that. I can quote it all night, but you still don't believe it. We've got to get that revelation. We have the revelation of who He is, but now we've got to get a revelation of who we are in Him. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. So wherever I go, it's Christ in me. It doesn't matter about my faults or my failures or the problems or my inabilities or things that I don't have together. I have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost so I could have been in church for a day or I could have been in church for 20 years. But it's Christ in me, the hope of glory. And so when I begin to connect with that, then I have can, can go into the promises that God has for me. And I can begin to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall recover. But what we, what we deal with is the mindset of the society and the culture that we live in. We were born, we are now a new creation. We, are, we, we now put on the mind of Christ. We now think different. But we still deal with that old mindset. We still deal with that way of thinking that comes from our background of living in this world. And this world says, if I can't see it, I don't believe it. And this, in, 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 our, in our education, in our things, uh, living here in life, we are very skeptical. Someone could testify tonight, even some of you dealt with a little skepticism here tonight. 
testified of a couple things that happened. And the first thing that came to your mind was, I wonder if they were really sick in the first place. Or maybe the do- doctor just got it wrong. Right? If we're honest, that type of thing bombards our minds. It's because of the, the skepticism that is in our culture and in the old world that we used to live in. But now when we come to Jesus, we have a new way of thinking. We have a new way of talking. We, we have a new way of viewing things. And now in the kingdom of God, all things are new. And so at times we are wrestling between these two worlds. I, for however many years I lived in this world thinking this way. But now I'm in the kingdom of God. Now I have a new way of thinking. But I have that, I have that battle. I serve a God of miracles. But I'm still living here in this world where everything is questioned. And doubt. It's a culture of doubt that we deal with on a daily basis. Many of you are, 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 would readily accept Many testimonies of miracles that happen in a foreign country. We say, oh, yeah, I believe that, that can happen in Africa. Yeah. Oh, bro, we're, we're, we're with you, Brother Harry. We, we, man, we believe that in Spain. Yeah, we believe that can happen in Spain. But, but when it comes to happening in Arkansas, we say, oh, I, I know it's 70 days of miracles, but let's just keep it to financial miracles and let's keep it to let this physical miracles. We have a hard time at times grasping that God could do it here and even a harder time grasping that God could use me that God could use me to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover we, 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 we fight with that so I'd, I'd like before we pray tonight I would like for us to pray right where we're at we're going to pray over our thinking our minds we're going to bind all doubt and fear that would come against our thinking. And we're going to put on the mind of Christ. Lord, help me to think as you think. Help me to see the situation as you see. Help me to see myself as you see me. Because when I see myself as you see me and I understand who I am, then I can step into authority and begin to do what you have told me to do. He has told me to lay hands on the sick. He has told me to raise the dead. He's told me to cast out devils. He's told me to heal the sick. But until I get a revelation of who I am, I, I, I have a hard time stepping into that. So I, this is this, this, this a little strange, but let's just do this here together. We'll be strange together. Let's do this together. We're going to pray over them. Just take your hand and just put it on your forehead. This is where we think. This is, and I, We're just going to pray over our thinking for just a moment. We're going to come against every doubt and fear. And we're going to pray that God would loose within us faith to see what he wants us to see. And have us a revelation of who we are. Lord Jesus, I take dominion and authority over every doubt. I bind every fear. I bind everything that would come against our thinking in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, Lord, you have, we have been born again. We are a new create, create creature. Lord, we are a new creature in you, Lord. Now we put on the mind of Christ. Lord, I pray that you would help us, Lord, to begin to see us how you see us Lord give us a revelation God that you are wanting to use every single one of us Lord that your word states that we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover Lord right now I lose faith over our minds over our thinking Lord Lord I bind every lying spirit every doubt and every fear that would come against the people of God that would come against our thinking right now in Jesus name and Lord let us have a revelation tonight of who we are and the power that is working within us in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bind every doubt and fear, everything that would come against the way that I think, God. Lord, every spirit of skepticism, every doubt that would battle against that spiritual man, I bind it in the name of Jesus and I lose faith right now in Jesus' name. I pray for a revelation, God, of the power that is working within us right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, let us be changed, Lord. Let a spirit of revelation be loosed and released right now in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord in Jesus name now let's clap our hands to the Lord all together Lord I thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus hallelujah I thank you Jesus I thank you Jesus so if, if we are going if we are going to talk about it if we're going to preach about it if we're going to take 70 days and focus on it then we've got to do it. We've got to step in and stretch our faith and say, okay, Lord, if your word says it, I believe it. 
And we're just going to step out and just test it out, Lord, and just try it out. So if you have a need in your body tonight, if you have sickness in your body, you need healing in your body. And you would like the Lord to touch you. I want you to come forward here first. And in a moment, we're going to pray together. If you want to keep it, that's up to you. You can keep it. I mean, the Lord doesn't want to heal anybody who wants to keep it. But if you have something in you, in, in, in your body, you need healing, I want you to come around the front. And here in just a moment, we're going to prepare ourselves to receive what God has for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Now, if you look around here, we, we believe the word of God. We, 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 uh, we, we are... We, we are good people. We love God, but we're dealing with many different things in our spirit.